welcome to Rich Sports this evening. Today we've got a great panel. We've got a couple of people that play, either would you say semi-professionally or professionally, but definitely know what they're talking about in terms of tactics, in terms of a lot of things that people gloss over and think they know about and just throw a lot of words out there. But hopefully we're going to make a lot of sense tonight. If not, I think me and G Wolf are going to learn quite a lot. But welcome yeah. from the Man United agenda, Amondi. Good to get you back on. Hope you're good tonight. Yeah, fantastic to be on the show, Rich. Thanks for the invitation. And you've uh, I've joined forces again uh, with uh, <laughs> Bath Time Report. It's been a long time. Uh, I really like Bath Time, as you know, and um, I really respect his football game and his knowledge. And I know he can play. And I know when it comes to sort of the tactical side of things as well, I've learned a lot from this brother over the over a short space of time that I've known about him and I've incorporated a lot of the stuff that we talk because I love talking football and if you want it's like uh, we're nerds when it comes to this thing I'm just it, you know so much knowledge that we, we, we bounce off each other but I've learned so much and I've incorporated it into my Sunday side because I'm managing now Sunday side and uh, it's just yeah football's a wonderful game and it's like they talk about barber shops and places like that where you can go talk sports I know a lot of West Indies you should talk cricket Drinking rum, you know, for you for time, for hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. People talk about um, WWE or whatever, which brings on to our intro, which I thought you're going to bring to us. But um, yeah, I just think football is the greatest sport on in the world. I think there's a lot of people that we get these days that talk a lot of football, but I think they repeat a lot of stuff. And when you got the um, ability now to get Bath Time and myself on, who play the game regularly, you get a different kind of insight into what really goes on. The dark arts, for example, and what the, the things that you learn that you don't, some things you, you, you learn that you're not really coached about how to become a better player and how to get the advantage. The team game, best team game in the world. And uh, I'm really, really excited uh, to be talking about it like this. Um, just the fundamentals. It's a great game. And uh, this is going to be a great show, I'm sure. And welcome, Bath Time. Last but definitely not least, thanks for agreeing to do the show. I know we, the eye test was a, a very popular show and you done some tactics stuff on here before but reunited with Mondi, me and g wolf really looking forward to it and everybody watching the, the whole aim is to try and provide insight but if people have questions obviously we want to take everybody along with us if, if anyone's got any questions about things that want clarification or anything they've heard other people talking about that doesn't make sense then please get questions in we'll try and um, get them answered if we can but welcome bath time Thanks, Rich. I thought that was a really low blow from a Monday to bring up a barber shop in your presence as if you've been to <laughs> <laughs> um, one, th one thing I would like to say is that it would be very generous to describe me as a semi-professional, but a Monday, he never reveals it, but he was a professional footballer. So um, like, keep that in mind. We're really excited to share this show with all of you we're not here to patronize you or make anyone feel stupid this is about like just trying to kind of up the quality of how we talk about football and um i'm delighted to be joined by g wolf how are you g wolf i'm very well thank you thank you for getting me in on here and hopefully i'll be able to learn a little bit more about footy the one that i love all right gents should we begin let's do it let's go for it all right. So today, what we've sort of got prepared for you is what I consider to be the most fundamental thing in football. Everything is related to it and everything should be related to it. So when you talk about tactics or players or signings, you should all consider this one concept. And on Monday, what is that concept? Space, the final frontier. Space. <laughs> Nice, you are a nerd, aren't you? <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, it's about it's about space. Space to me, when I'm playing football, when I'm watching football, most of the time, I'm thinking about space. I'm thinking about how players influence it, where it is on the pitch, how it's being protected, how it's being managed, how it's being created, and how it's being attacked. It is so it's so important. It's untrue. Everything is about space if you hear someone talk about a formation that doesn't really matter so like if when we do the dots forest preview tomorrow or whatever and you get a fan on don't ask them what formation they play ask them how they deal with space like what do they do when they're being attacked 
like how how are they sort of set up to to counter or exploit space in the transition and um how do they try and generate space like these are all the things you should ask yourself all the time space 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 so i'm on there as a defender like tell me tell me how you sort of how you view space space is vital i mean look we could talk all day about it so as a defender space means anything so it could mean the space between you and a goalkeeper the space between you and your defensive line your unit is about partnerships isn't it so my defensive unit would be my fullbacks and my center back partnership i want them nice compact the space is important because if i leave lots of space there's space for the to, for team to exploit get in behind open up gaps that kind of thing then there's also space between my defensive unit which i control with the midfield in front of me how do we incorporate that space? What's important there? Do we close the gap to, to keep the space uh, tight? Do we sit back? So if we go back on our, uh, a, a low block, do we want the midfield to come back with us? If the midfield are trying to press the ball, we want to compress the space and get up to the halfway line and com compact the space in their half so they got an opportunity to close down balls, that sort of thing. There's so many factors here. And it, it, even with the forwards as well, the forwards have got a lot of space in front of them. Uh, they've got space in behind. You can stand on the last man, play a ball in behind into space. Uh, space is so important. When I'm marking somebody, do I uh, do I get touch tight with them to, to so I can feel them? Um, they can feel me. They can you know if it's someone who's big and strong who I was up against the other day, he can feel me. He can roll me because I'm too close to him. So if I stand off him a little bit uh, and create a little bit of space, he doesn't know where I'm going to intercept the ball, where I'm going to come from. You know, to, so I'm always thinking about space as a centre back. Uh, that's important. And also in other positions as well. It's vital. Space is vital because it's a massive pitch, especially when you're playing on a, a real full-size pitch with 11 players. You're, if the team's in unity and can, can be in, in um, a, a good shape all the time, compact and everything else, you can make yourself really difficult to beat based on the space that you where you're it's like breathing when you haven't got the ball you you breathe in and you're you're compact when you're, you have got the ball you breathe out and you can become expansive and and play and open up space so uh, i keep saying space 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 but over to you bath time as a center back it is vital okay right are you lads able to see like what's on the screen at the moment yeah yep yeah like my like my like my little tactics board yeah yeah yep all good all right. So during during like um, a Monday talking about space there, he mentioned like several concepts um, that we're, we're going to go through now. And that, uh, he talked about compactness um, and lines and blocks. Um, and this and this is basically how it sort of boils down is that you have your first line. Um, actually, we won't do a press. We'll do it as a defense. You have your first line, which in a 4-4-2 will be a 9 and 10. And then you have like the midfield line and you have the defensive line. All very obvious. But the key thing is, is that these lines can't be can't be far apart, because if they're far apart, you get players that are able to play in between the lines, which kills teams. Right. You, 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 you can't have that because um, it just bypasses a line. So with space. A defensive team, and all teams are defensive, want to squeeze the space as much as possible by playing compact and also doing something else. And this is this is the next sort of like important point, which is um, now it's called quartering, but it used to be called halving the pitch. So what halving the pitch means is that you play in half the pitch. So your whole team is on the ball side like this mm -hmm. and the whole po the whole point of it right is that they're only allowed to transition in their half from a center back and what that means is it means it's incredibly difficult to be played through and that is that's the first like important point about space is that in attack and in defense you need to be compact there is width which we'll get to later but space is it but is this jesus you're right amonde you just keep saying space don't you um, yeah. like space is about managing and exploiting threats so you want your team to be as close to each other and as compact and this is the next um point i want to sort of illustrate is that this this okay so 
a player is like this with the ball facing his own goal. Why, Amonde, do you not want to let him turn? Because what the players come and turn into you, you mean? Yeah, like this, we're in defence. This guy's yeah. on the ball. He's yeah. facing. He's like he's he's facing that way. Okay. Yeah. Very important. All right. So you don't want this guy to turn on you because then he can create things. You want to play him, make him play the way he's facing. So if the ball comes into his feet with his back to goal, make him remain. He doesn't have to come through the guy or anything, but make him play back away from the goal, as far away from goal as possible. So his space doesn't want you don't want him turning and be able to create something or switching the play as you see there with this quarter space that we've created here you want him to play the way he's facing and that you can do that with subtle pressure pressure just being behind him and don't allow the man to turn not getting too tight where he can roll you but just being enough where you can make him force him to say you go that way and you can direct people it's a bit like varan he shepherds people the way mm. he wants to go without making tackles literally he can literally with you his pace and his awareness he can shepherd someone away from goal and that's the ideal here you don't want people to be turning into you and be able to attack you and run at you that's the worst thing harry Maguire um doesn't like it <laughs> but, but well actually like you, you laugh about harry Maguire, but there was a tiktok clip i think in the summer was it where um do you remember some bloke like with his girlfriend was like analyzing football and he was going mental at Maguire yeah. for trying to stop a player turning it was some of the worst analysis i've ever seen and i watched this channel quite a lot like, <laughs> <laughs> it was unreal but um th this hopefully can illustrate amonde's point which is that when a player is like facing goal he's got all of these options to aim for right Yep. When he's when the ball is south side, he's, he can just really play back, uh, but and he can't he can't really like affect play so much. So the first so in in defending, we want a compact shape. We don't want people turning, and we certainly don't want people in between the lines, right? That is that is true from Manchester City to Colchester City. We don't want anything there. So have we got any? Um, questions or anything rich I can't, i'm just going to stop sharing so i can see this if anyone's got any questions about what's been discussed so far please get them in and we'll put them up uh, so g wolf so far what would your summary be of like of space so my summary would be like just literally with the defense the space between the attacking and the uh, midfielders and all that lot don't keep them up or oh, you know keep it compact and also you've got to think about the defense as, and your goalkeeper as well how much space you need between that so if you want to don't let the, the uh, strike like striker or playmaker turn on you so keep it compact so if he's facing towards his own goal ship like as on Monday said shepherd him towards that way instead of like turning so then he can like either switch the switch the uh, course of play or pass it into pass it to another midfielder who can literally attack on like counter attack on us so yeah like that's what i was getting from that really okay yeah that's that's good um so basically so for, for a kind for a kind of summary sorry i was just pretty stunned by niall's comment uh, for a second um uh like so for for a summary is that like um players have their individual space that they need to look after like like a lion it's their territory um yep. They're part of a unit, so the defensive unit has to be organised. It's typically got to be in a line, and you'll see like the top players all talking to each other and pointing and things. And that is when they're they're managing the space. Um, and then with with a the midfield, they're just they don't get played through with the midfield, and that's why you're compact. And then you're like the first line of your block um has to be honest has to work the hardest because they've got to stop the what they've got to do is that they've got to keep the ball going out to which side of the pitch you're defending so this is one of the issues that we had with ronaldo is that ronaldo wasn't working hard enough to allow us to be compact 
it wasn't just his lack of like the sort of the full press or pressing traps it was mm. that he wasn't closing people down and things and that's that's kind of like what that that's the sort of first step about space is it's it's an individual responsibility it's a unit responsibility and it's a team responsibility and so when we talk about stuff you have to talk about the space on the pitch yeah okay, do we have any questions Rich? yeah just Monday. just just as i was watching the wildlife show the other day and just as so you've got um some wildebeest or or protecting their young and they they minimize the space as a team they've all, they're all on the same uh, page here. They minim if there's a, a threat from a lion or hyena, they protect their young by minimising the space and protecting the space in between where their young are in between them. So they herd themselves around the pitch or the, the plane by moving around in sync with one another to prevent space where threats can come in. That, I, I think it's quite simple. I think that's right? key, isn't it? Operating mm -hmm. as a team. So if yeah. one line presses, the other push up. So it's not about... Like I said, if if one if half the players are pressing and half are not, or they're not in sync, then that's a massive problem. But I I agree. If if anyone's got any questions, obviously get them in any time. Um, so I'm just looking at Niall's question. Um, when we're in possession, the ball on the right side happened a few times on Saturday. Aaron Rambasaka will tuck it to the pocket number ten position to leave Anthony one on one. Yes, Niall, that's almost true. We can actually, like, towards the end of the show, we might do a special segment on Anthony and, like, his relationship I'd with space. But well, would yeah. you like to do that? All right, we'll do, yeah, we'll do that. Later on, but yeah, I think that's a really good question, uh, Niall. Um, yeah, no, Niall, that's, that's, the, that's, it's your house, it's your rules. That's one of the best questions I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, that's a really astute observation. And I'm just going to check my notes, um, see if I've got everything here okay yeah so i think the next thing that we're going to talk about is um uh how how space is managed in attack which will fit in to sort of niall's question so um if i just sort of go full screen and is rich do you have any questions or like amanda is anything you want to clear up of g wolf whatever no i'm good, I'm good. no i'm good. Yeah, all good all good ready to go okay are we am i am i shared yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. OK, so with the principle of quartering the pitch in play, um, what you will tell, we'll have the white team sort of defending and they're they're going to be we'll put them into a we'll put them in a three um, defending a block. So they're all the right hand side. Like this, what you will find that teams do now is they will have their main route and their out route. And the out route is you'll have a player like Anthony who who is playing as a winger. And a winger, by definition, is someone who's in a wide area. Okay, like inverted, inverse, doesn't matter. If you're a winger, hmm. your starting position is out wide. And what you tend to find is, you know it's coming, Amanda. Yeah. What is this structure that I'm building here? This little structure. Are you asking me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I thought you were... All right. It's called the rest defense. Yes. It's called it's it's called a rest defense, and we'll play it. We'll we'll do it as um uh, a three two rest defense. But what you will find is that you'll find teams play like this, and they will leave a player out here as the sort of out ball. And this is something that I d I don't know if anyone remembers um. France uh, in the World Cup. Um, they did this all the bloody time, uh, and it caused England problems. With um, was it Dembele out here? Yeah, right Dembele. Here. And so, first of all, you have two issues here, G Wolf. Right? If this block here, the tens, uh, the the first block, if they mm. can't stop the ball getting to this player with time, so let's say that this is Casemiro. Yeah. This switch here is on every time and then this team has to shuffle over right yep but because we're trying to create space what you will normally find happen is you'll find your number nine get in between um we'll try and pin the two center backs right and because yeah. of the position of the width out here this number three where does he go 
Well, I would have thought that he would be trying to go towards a seven. In this situation. Well, if the number six, mm-hmm. like, you know, obviously if Casemiro's got the ball and yeah. he's got the out and he's got the outlet to number seven. That and that ball's on every single time. Surely he would operate that space, the number seven space. So he'll pass that over to the number seven. So that number three will have to come back. So that number three will have to track back to the um book towards the ball. That's what I think he would do, wouldn't he? So you're 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 suggesting yeah, so like that. Yeah. All right. What actually happens is it's the number eight. The number eight's got to break himself to get into this half space here. And the three's got to come across, and then you see the problem. There is a huge gap here. Yeah. Space is being created. And even if the number eight is a bit lazy and he doesn't get out and the three gets out, there is a huge gap here. Exactly. So, th- so this this is how um you went this is how you try and create space. What you do um, and this go this will go to sort of um, a point that Niall made about um, Aaron Wambazaka's position is that like your sort of like your starting positions for a team will be something like this, mm-hmm. where you will try and get I should I should have mentioned this earlier um, you will try and tie centrally with three players their yeah. their back line. Okay, because one key aspect of space, which I should have mentioned, is you can you always want at a minimum plus one in your defence. You need one more player than they do, yeah. and you want to at least be matched in the midfield, and that means that up front there's there's less people there. So you don't yeah. mind being outnumbered here. You don't want to be outnumbered here, and yeah. you definitely don't want to be outnumbered here. It's ridiculous. So what teams do is that they use these width. So they will have wide players out here trying to stretch, trying to stretch these teams out with space. Okay. Yeah. And because of that, what you have is you is in the rest defence. You will have your fullbacks coming in. So you're not outnumbered in the center of the pitch. So e- so the the rest defense is basically a um, is this thing here, G Wolf. It's, it's, yeah. defen- it's a defensive unit that allows you to um, to press, to counter press, and be protected against transitions. Like if you like look out for this in games because you'll see it everywhere. Like um, and the reason that your fullbacks are inverting. Um, I'll, sorry, I'll just switch. I'll switch these guys around. The reason that your fullbacks are inverting um, is in order to control the centre of the pitch here. Yep. And then you have these players out here that are pulling fullbacks, that are pulling midfielders out of position, allowing balls. Like, how often do you see this ball from Martinez? Quite a lot. These two balls here are his favourite balls, and the, and that is because it's very very difficult to defend because we're exploiting the space. Mm. Now, Amande, is there anything you want to add here about like? Yeah, yeah. Was, go um, on. Uh, this is a really good point. I mean, a lot of people. That's why uh, I agree with bath time. You shouldn't talk about formations because mm. formations change throughout the game. I've seen a lot of teams now look at that setup, but they've sort of when you got the ball. Uh, you're playing a two-man defense, maybe two, three, two, three, five, quite possibly mm. with a five stretching across the width of the pitch, which is really a long, a really wide area to stretch the defenders. As uh, G Wolf was uh, showing, showed there, if you drag someone out, you can create space in behind. If you watched the game the other day, if anyone's really watching the game with Man United, when we were a better team than uh, Reading, we had maybe five or six players across their defensive line at all times. And what they kept doing is spinning off, trying to get in behind or creating spaces and creating little ro- rotations as well. And also, as we, we've shown with uh, wan playing infield, that left Anthony out wide with the outlet ball. Uh, unfortunately, Malasia was given a chance opportunity. He didn't have the skill or he didn't have it in the locker to spray that ball early. So you need players at like Ericsson on the ball who can switch to play really quickly. Otherwise, you've got to play 
quick, fast passes to shuffle for bring the ball from one end, from the left to the right, so you can get a guy in one-on-one -on -one situations. It's really, really important. So it's all about spacing and getting creating space and opening teams up. We didn't have that strategy a couple of years ago. I know watching Rich Sports, uh, make sure you press the like button, by the way, for Rich. Uh, Rich is doing great stuff. <laughs> watching Rich Sports, there's always been complaints about breaking low blocks down. So this is where you get these rotations. This is where you get uh, drills to create space against teams that are stubborn and just shuffle across, shuffle across, and denying you that space in the middle, in the main area where you score goals, which is in the six-yard box or the penalty area or just outside the area. You want to protect that area there. So teams are really well-drilled and disciplined to stop better teams than you creating space. We just watched the FA Cup. There's been a few upsets. And these upsets, you think, oh, that's impossible. How can a team from the Premiership lose to a team from maybe the second division? But you can. If you're organised enough and deny people space and you get opportunities on set pieces, whatever, that's what you've got to play for. And I think Reading really struggled to play out. They put, kept struggling, kept uh, persisting, persisting, uh, trying to um, deny us uh, any space to cr create in their team against their team, and they, they got a set piece or they got a break, and they, they, they score from that. And that's what you have to wait for. So it's really, really important. What we're seeing now is formations or on the pitch during the game where one team's more dominant, where you can have six people lined up, mm. stretching the width of the pitch against a back four or five, and then it he, he ends up with the midfielders getting camped in and almost suffocated where they can't even get out because they're trying to uh, work so hard to sort of go with runners and that kind of thing. And then it gets dragged out of position, and this is how you create opportunities. You've got to keep probing, probing, probing. So some thing, people think, oh, it's boring. Nothing's happening. We're not breaking teams down. But if you watch very closely, what I watched, for example, against Reading game, people are peeling off, dragging people out. Like This one thing, Beckhorst is very important. He's occupying two mm. of these defenders. He's coming slightly deep. They're going with him. So like, right, we can't let him get the ball because he's got the ability to sort of uh, play play a little one, two, three, which is a third man run, which I think he's doing really well at the moment to create space in behind. So do you go with him or not? Martial was doing that as well. And then we've seen Bruno, for example, who's fantastic, who can't be replicated at the moment. There's no one in the squad who re can replicate what he does, where he can spin off, come deep, come deep, spin off, and get in behind from spaces created like that. So space, we said it so many times, the key word yeah. there, is so, so important on a high level of the game. I just want to, I know I'm waffling here, but I just want to talk because it, it's really relevant. We played a better team. My Sunday team played a really young team who were really <laughs> good. Um, and then we've got the best defensive record in the league because this is what I focus on, denying team space. Teams say mm. to me, oh God, you, you really don't, we can't create opportunities against you. And we're good like that. But against yesterday, we are against a really tough team. So we were obviously compact. We were just shuffling over, keeping it compact. And then against a better team, we had more of the ball. But because the forwards weren't pressing, uh, I asked the forwards not to press um, until they come into your half. OK, but they didn't. They were just out there wide and not staying together. Suddenly, these their defenders or their midfielders had time to switch to play. And I'm saying this isn't premiership football. We don't get players who can switch to play in Sunday league football. But lo and behold, lo and behold, they did. And they were sp spraying it wide to their wide men. And uh, this guy was brilliant. He was in one on one situations. He was absolutely brilliant and killing our right back. So at half time, the right back said to me, oh, God, what am I going to do um, with this situation? And I said exactly that. As soon as what I said clearly, guys, we have to do it as a unit. We go together. How do we, they're spraying balls. First of all, we have to close the balls down. Uh, stop them from turning. As we said earlier, stop the guy from turning to, to face us, to be able to look up and spray the ball. If you see him spraying the ball, everyone's got to react, say he's about to spray the ball. You go early because you know that's mm. exactly what's going to happen. So you've got to anticipate things as a team as well. And then when, when our right back goes out to meet this guy, he wants to, off his first touch, you want to be in his face. A bit like how Martinelli was in the face of wan against Arsenal the other day. As soon as the ball got played out by De Gea, which was a poor play out, he suddenly was confronted with someone in your face saying, yeah, I'm pinching that ball. Do you understand? That's what, how you want to do it. So um, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate the same things that I've been taught by bath time into our Sunday team. And when I was asking <laughs> It's true. But when I, I know. Asked, they asked the question, how do we solve this situation? And I was able to really conclusively tell them exactly what they need to do it. Anticipate as a team when we shuffle over together. You can see them about to spray the ball. They've got time and space. To hit a 60-yard pass, you you shape up. You don't just you don't have no back lift. You have to really shape up right, boom, and hit a pass. You by that time, you want to be running over. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's one thing. And also, what half times you said there is crucial are my midfielder or my centre midfielder and my right midfielder had to also get over there and be as backup. So if my uh, right back can go and engage him, if he got beat, then there's someone there to pinch the ball. And it kind of worked once they understood that. Sorry for going on, but I'd have to give examples there. That's, that's all right, Amande. I just wanted to, whilst we were hearing the chronicles of like Woodlands FC, I've just drawn a picture of a, a football pitch to um, uh, to give some reference to a couple of things. Um, the like it's quite obvious what it is. The black areas are the half spaces. So like Rich and G Wolf, you'd have heard this term all the time, half space. Yep. These are the half spaces, these little squiggly areas. Um, this you might not have heard about. This is called the interior. And this is um, the, this is uh, where you will find Bruno Eriksson uh, and players like De Bruyne sort of starting off and things. Uh, and then you have wide areas. But Amonde has pretty nicely illustrated like um, uh, several, several concepts about, oh, of course, I've got to do this. Uh, several concepts about space where because a football pitch is fucking massive um, you can't control all of the space all of the time so the space that you give up is the key thing and when you're playing a block and all these kind of things they're obviously they're going to go wide so like let's say let's get their winger out wide and their other winger out wide you've got you've got to stop quick passes to them it's got to be slow to get out there so that the team can move over. And this this is why we only allow transitions from the centre backs. You can't, you can't, like, it, it, transitioning a ball here is very different to transitioning a ball here. These are why players like Paul Scholes were just incredible because they, they were able to find the space to use their technique and to bring others into play with those beautiful raking passes. Yeah. Um, and to a lesser degree, it's why um, Trent and David Beckham are so highly valued by people in football, because in wide areas, they can hit any area of the pitch with accuracy and quality. And I know Trent's not flavour of the month, but, but trust me, he is an, a, an elite attacking tool. It's just he's a tool in defence as well. Especially with the uh, free kicks as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, like, um, I've just seen Box is bringing up Carrick again. I glazes out Carrick. I have them muted on Twitter, and I'm going to get them muted on this show. To be honest, <laughs> um, you need to mute Carrick on Twitter. I don't really see Carrick. No, I've, yeah. I've muted Victor Osman today. I'm just sick of it. Like, um, I, I is it because he got one good goal? People are. I just about. like no one can tell me why he's so good. Like in in relation to space and things, like we're going to talk about Vierkost, Anthony, Bruno a little bit later, and why Vierkost is has been an excellent signing and um, why it's bringing the best out of Anthony because of the use of space on the pitch. But when we sort of bring up like Osman, he's fast, he's strong. I, 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 like what can you tell me about how he interacts with the space, what he does for other people and things like do we particularly need speed in the center of our attack? We definitely need physicality, but I don't know if we need just speed. But like uh but anyway, I'm sorry I'm having a complete rant about what I don't like seeing on Twitter, isn't it? Um but yeah, so have we got any comments, Rich? Has anyone's got any questions? I don't know if this is even a relevant question to a bit FIFA. Or maybe you could just say, if you take the word FIFA out of it, what is this a space? Is, is Box trying to say which player is good at creating space? Or I don't know. I, 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 for this one, if we talk about Manchester United, I think Ericsson's a player. Obviously, physically, he's not the greatest. He's not the fastest. But you look at the goal against Arsenal, where he, the space was created. We were, like we were saying earlier, uh, I think it was the third goal where Ericsson ran through the middle of the park and squared it for Rashford against Arsenal. Remember, not the recent game, the one prior mm. to that at Old Trafford. Uh, Ericsson's such a great player. What he does by creating space, you play into his feet, you try and rush him to close him down, he just pop it off. Next time you play into his feet, you think, well, maybe I'm not going to rush in, rush into him because he's just going to pop it off again. But then he's got you now because he's got such good technique. He can just turn now and say, right, you're not rushing me. Let me turn out and then I can start playing. As you said, he's able to turn this time. You you can't, and then in creating space as well, making little triangles, play the ways he's facing, dictate the, the tempo of the game. 
able to use his left foot and right foot to switch to play. He's very key. That's what I'm saying. He can't be replicated in our in our club at the moment, you know. But that goal that was created against Arsenal, there was it, all the game was um, congested in one side of the pitch. We actually lost. They lost the ball. We played two touch, two passes, and suddenly Ericsson was played through the middle of the park. And you think he's the slowest player on the pitch, on 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 the pitch completely. But he's able to. He, he saw the space. He knew what was happening here. It's drilled, and he ran in through to space and squared it, and we scored. Ericsson, to me is a great example of someone who uses space really well. One because he's wise. He's always been wise. But a lot of these players today, they don't have to. Um, insight about what's really going on in football because you've got a lot of physical abilities. You're young, you're fresh, you're fast, and you use your physical attributes too well. But eventually, as you lose your physical attributes, you have to learn about the game and spacing and intelligence and how to use things and how to be wise. So that's why they say players peak at sort of 27, 28 because your physicals are declining, but at the same time, you're having to adapt and get your wisdom up. And this is why I think someone like Rashford does his celebration. No one knows. I don't know unless someone in the comments knows. But I think he does that celebration to say, ah, oh, I get it now. My wisdom is coming up to my physical prowess and I'm becoming the peak player because I've been taught by a coach now. I'm being coached how to use my wisdom with my physical abilities. So I'm not running into traffic. I'm not running 100 miles an hour playing that sort of style of football. I'm, I've got that balance now where I'm becoming a great player and fulfilling my potential because my physical speed and uh, great physical attributes combined with now my more better knowledge of the game and spacing, I'm becoming good. So that's why I think it goes like that. That's just my example uh, for players. What a great answer to a question about um, what you would give uh, space ratings for people in FIFA. Um, in interestingly, like I don't know why I remember this, but I've read an article about how uh, ratings are given in FIFA, and one of the big ones was about Muller uh, um, at Bayern because um, they have no rating for how people occupy space, and so it would be him box as uh, FIFA has apparently spent five or six years trying to understand Muller and how he plays, and he plays in a, a pos his position. I can't remember what it is. It's called like in English, it's like space investigator or like space explorer. It's similar to Deli Alley and um, obviously super brainiac Donny Van Der Beek. Um, but uh, yeah, um, uh, but like so, it, when we're sort of all so much talk about space but that is really what it's like sort of all about so what what's up next rich from kate cadet i got a question from kate which i think is quite a good question as well when we, we said that a lot of people have been talking over the last few years about manchester united struggling to break down a low block so kate's question is why do you think that is why do you think we struggled to break down a low block in the past one player <laughs> Harry Maguire. I'm saying one player, Harry Maguire. Literally, he he <laughs> he's supposed to be our captain. And like you know, when the rest of the team are like want to have a solid base, Maguire is the one that goes out of position and then literally goes forward, and like he breaks that sort of sort of like that hold that's to give them the space to um and that's how we struggle with the low block that's the way that i that's the way that i see maguire every time that the attacking team when they come on to us they always seem to manage to get be able to get maguire out of position because he's always coming forward either heading the ball trying to get to the ball first where you've got his midfielders in front of him and because he's wants to take charge, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, it's always him that's always out of position. And it's always him that is the reason why we always conceding our goals. That well that's down that's what I'm seeing anyway, what I'm seeing on the pitch. Every time that we concede a goal with him in it, with the low block with the um struggling with the low block, it's because of him. All right, I understood that I think you're talking absolute bollocks to be perfectly okay, honest, you. but yeah, like, yeah, with, yeah. with the greatest of respect. But it's, no, it's no, no, you're fine. what I find is interesting is that when the question is struggle against a low block, I like sort of like interpreted that as why can't we score 
against a low block yeah. not whilst we're, what not whilst we're conceding against the low block like even though you will occasionally get individual errors from like players in your team it is it is a team and it is like like sometimes someone's done something wrong and it's obvious and sometimes what they they might look out of position because they're trying to cover someone else who hasn't filled their space. We see we used to see this a lot with Luke Shaw, where Luke Shaw was always getting caught out at the back post, yeah. but where he had one or two options. And that is because Bruno or Rashford or Greenwood or Sancho or whoever wasn't coming back to fill in their space. But a Monday, as Mrs. Maguire, how do you want to how do you want to start with this 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 wild accusation that Harry Maguire is responsible for United not being able to break down a low block. So the question is, how do, what issues have we had in the past, which I did touch on earlier about breaking down low blocks, because we played against key games in the last couple of seasons where we couldn't break them down and we just like, run out of ideas. How do we get, find space? And here we go. What, what's the difference now is we've got a coach who's teaching the players to create space for ourselves. And it's slowly we're seeing this um, evolution of the, our play, which is working against lo low block teams. We played Reading and Nottingham Forest in recent weeks who also don't have much to get offer as a, a threat. They're looking to counter us. So obviously they, they know they're outmatched for quality because we're Man United and they are who they are. So we're likely to have more of the ball. So in that case, we when they break, we might be out of position because we weren't coached before. Now, we've got, like, uh, bath time to say we might have a rest defence, which is why I think G-Wolf is suggesting that in the past, when we played against low block, they break on us, and suddenly we haven't got that insurance of the rest defence. We were all over the place. This is why Harry Maguire and players like don't like players running at him. This is why I think you were trying to uh, say yeah. that, that G-Wolf. Yeah, that, exactly. Um, when we're playing against low block, we struggle, don't break them down. They get one break, and suddenly we're uh, outnumbered. As bath time highlighted earlier, when we're in defence, we always want to have an extra man to avoid those sort of situations. So I understand what you're saying there, G Wolf. You did um, kind of make a good point, but don't disrespect Harry Maguire. Much <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, but I think this shows. You know that I defended Harry Maguire for I, so I, long, I, but I, then I, the I, only I, thing is, yeah, well, the I'm guy. Just joking. Is... But I, I get your point because we've seen so many situations where we've been countered. I remember Wolves last season, a few other games, yeah. where we weren't coached correctly. And now what we're seeing, what Bath Prime is saying about how to uh, organise the team correctly, he's been analysing Ten Hag and seeing the development of our play. You started the show talking about wan -Bissaka. On the right, there's a question there about wan -Bissaka. Why is he there? What's that doing? It's creating spaces. It's, it's sort mm -hmm. of suckering people in. Why leave wan -Bissaka out wide? No one really passes to him in the final third. Put him in a position where... People say, well, I have to really pick him up because he's there. Do you understand what I'm saying? He doesn't, he's not effective, he doesn't score goal and anything else. But put him in a position in a half space or high up the pitch or centrally, or as we've seen him in recent weeks, uh, as these inverted fullbacks are doing, and they do a job. They're occupying someone and occupying someone who, who would get dragged out of position to pick him up, to exploit them. And uh, it's sort of like suckering somebody into getting anti to get free up space get him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So there's so many little techniques, so little subtle things we're seeing here to open up space and create space to break a blow block and get these defenders so dizzy and so tired mentally, because it's a mental game out here. As we witnessed against Arsenal the other day, absorbing all the pressure, it was a mental crap with uh, wan at the back post. Does he touch uh, Gabriel for that goal? He touched tight with Gabriel because he's the big man coming in the box. And then blindsided by uh, Nketiah, uh, who blindsided him and got the run on him and uh, beat him for that goal, for the header, for example. That's a mental lapse, nothing to do with his physical side of thing. So what, that's it's really taxing when you're on this receiving end of a possession-based team who are grinding out possession and probing and probing and probing and have the ideal, as we saw with the Man City game earlier, uh, we covered that, didn't we, bath time, how we were sort of mm -hmm. let... We had um, Tommy ended up at right back. Dallow ended up in midfield because of the rotations of Man City over and over again were creating space against us to exploit us. So Man City are a great example, if you watch football, of how to break down a low block. And we're looking at different ways now how to break it down. Where we're creating space, switching the play. One uh, third man runs, you know, as we've seen with Casemiro arriving in the box to score goals. It's These are different tactics, which our manager 
I love him, who is uh, incorporated <laughs> into the side and which we are seeing develop week after week after week. All right, we'll deal with third man runs another day. I think that that's quite a complicated topic. But essentially, a third man run is a, a three player combination where the players are on different lines and um, the third man receives the ball in space looking ahead. It's one of the most powerful attacking tools in football. And Man City and now Arsenal are like the masters of it. Like, they're, it's really, really annoying. But if you can show my screen, Rich, we'll go through a low block. Um, all right, so obviously the team in white are in the low block. Now, this is a bastard to play against. Like, there's no way around it. That is very, very difficult um, to break down. There are two ways that you do it, right? The first way is really boring, where you pass the ball back and your team drops to try and create space behind. Okay? Like, so yeah, if, if, bringing, if them all for, bringing the white ones all forward, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like a lot of the time you'll see um, you'll see people like Maguire um, getting called out for like being too slow on the ball at the back. That's that's a direct tactical instruction where what they're trying to do is they're trying to engage the first line of the of the press or the block in order to make space in behind. Um, and, and, and because when you could, when you hear about controlling a football match, you don't control a football match in midfield anymore. Um, there's not enough space. There's not enough time. You have to do it at the back. So you just like Pep has an expression called popping the ball in the fridge. And what that means is you just pass it about between the centre back and the goalkeeper, like um, to try and generate space. But Ten Hag isn't up for this. He 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 doesn't want to break down teams by creating space at the back. What he wants to do, and what most people want to do, is they want to isolate a pocket of space, right? Um, and here you can see that we have the rest defence structure: the three, the six, the two. I'll, I'll bring them up actually. Um, you you'll see you'll see something like this. They'd actually be, to be honest, they with Ten Hag, they'd be more compact. Right, they'd be much, much closer to each other. You, um, and this is one of the reasons why Harry Maguire is struggling in the team, because if the ball is on the left-hand side, um, so if, if yeah, if the ball is on the left-hand side, Maguire has to be the cover defender, which he's not particularly good at, and Ten Hag isn't playing a left footer, uh, isn't playing a right footer at left centre back. Like, I know everyone's quite surprised by Shaw playing at centre back, but we saw Alex Tellez in pre-season play in as a left centre back he the left foot's the most important thing but anyway that that digression aside what you want to do against a low block is you want to pull everyone across and then you want a quick transition out to this area here but in in the sort of the the modern development that i've seen in the last two seasons is that um you get double width which means that you have Instead of like a 1v1 between your full back here, you will get your left back on the same line as the um, as the winger. And this creates huge amounts of problems. Um, I suppose we could show it, actually. Um, sorry about this. Please, please don't dox me. I believe that I have the goal from City. Does anyone remember which one it was? Which goal? Sorry. Foden's third man run. All oh, right. Yeah. I don't know. It was six of them, wasn't it? Six to one odd. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, there's a few to remember. I tried to is blank it, some Is it this it. one? I haven't looked at this. Sorry, this is me poorly prepared. But um, this is an animation that I did a long time ago of... Um, uh, of City versus um, United. I think it is this one. I oh, know this is this the Haaland ball? No, this is the third man run. Okay. Yeah. So, Amande, do you want to talk us through this for all okay, time's so, sake? So they've actually started from the back here. Um, we'll go. We'll go from the back. Yeah. So they've they've picked up the ball. Man United have turned they've turned over the ball here. And it's gone out to Greenish in the left, and they've played it back where they're facing. Played it wide here to Silva, who's centre midfielder, now playing left wing. And had Scott had to go out to him. He's a centre midfielder. Suddenly, Greenish has got space that Scott used to occupy, and Scott's having to get back. He's played into KDB in the half space here. 
and he's played a long, a lovely cross, which was finished by Haaland. That's not the goal. That's that not that's through. not the right clip. We'll just keep like four nil, maybe. Or yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see. But um, still, it's quite fun to see these again. At least yeah. it is for me. So here's a goal kick from Man United. We've got Rashford here on the left. It's a good position, you assume. He's played it back, cut back, but it's been given to Ericsson. He wants to switch to play early. He goes out to Anthony. Oh, this is the goal from Anthony, isn't it? No? No. Okay, so KDB, here we go. So we're in a bad position here. We've got players ahead of the play. Haaland switches the ball, and um, Foden gets in front uh, of... I remember yeah. that one. Yeah. For the so goal. Like, when when you see these to bring them in to the, the sort of the topic, you can see like the problems that we have with the space here. Like Bruno's done well because these are the city lines, and you've got Anthony between the lines, Bruno kind of between the lines, um, and you can see that there's a rest defence structure here, so that looks quite good. But what goes wrong? Okay. So you've got you got you've you've got a bit of an overload here with um, the power of Haaland coming through, but I see what the problem is. You've got Delo and Malasia in the interior, and they should both be running in to the middle of the pitch. That's, to be the inverted. Yeah. See, they, see, they're not they're not doing their job because the fullbacks invert in order to stop this exact situation. Like, this is hell on earth for any player to have Kevin De Bruyne in the pocket with this amount of space. And you're going to see Foden. Yep. You're, you're going to see Foden coming in. And Malasia, he's more he's more worried about the man than he is about the space. They're not, they're not paying attention to the space here, are they? Haaland's created yep. space. That run out there. So here, we're nice. We're, we're pretty compact here. This is fine. But what he's done is he's made that pocket there, and Malasia yeah. is he's he's got he's got to be here. Yeah, got to break himself to get there. But um, enough about how good City are. But with the low block, um, what you want to do is you want to get is you want to suck a team into their quarter. So you want to get all of the block here and then as quickly as possible you want to get an overload in this area here and then look for, for cutbacks. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely difficult. Like The low block is the most effective defensive structure. Um, and like that's why you hear expressions like stretched. The game's got stretched because like the block's getting pulled out of position. Um, but enough of that. Just by the way, I thought, you know, the, the graphics you use for mm. the goal you showed for Man City, there's a great example, an illustration for people to see how we we were conceding goals and how we were out of position and how we were ahead of the play. Just in a splash, just from giving the ball away, we're in an attacking position. Suddenly a good team like City can exploit you like that and just to create space as uh, highlighted there. That's a great example. I really enjoyed that. I think that's a really important point, Amonde, because um, if if you just wanted to stop a goal, you would put six players on the goal line next to the goalkeeper. Even when you're in a low block, you still want to score a goal. And you're still, even when you're defending, you're still thinking about the space that you want to attack. Like So whilst there's a rest defence, there's also something called a rest attack. Um and things like that. And Brentford are probably the best I can think of off the top of my head of doing it. Although I'm quite excited for Sean Dyche. Like, um, I do I do enjoy defensive football. But it's like, it's when, when we talk about, like, um, low blocks and things, that's once again an example of how the, the opposition are managing their space and what our players have to do to create the space. Because if you look at a player like Cavani, Cavani was a master at leaving space where he would just he would know where the space is that he wanted to attack and he just let it simmer 
like a soup on a cooker, just <laughs> waiting for it. And it's my big problem with Donny van der Beek is that I dislike Donny van der Beek when he's on a football pitch because he clogs up the space. He, he just points and runs into point. space all the time. And again, in sort of top level football, like I think I've told this story on the eye yeah. test, but I, I always have to talk to my strikers about their runs because they they always think that like they're playing with Dennis Bergkamp or something who could instantly hit a ball 60 yards onto a penny. You've got to wait until the player on the ball is in position to execute it. And and what you what you do is you just peel you peel off a little bit from the centre back. That's the expression getting on his shoulder. So he he has to sort of take his eye off where the ball is coming from, look where his man is, you know, put his hand out feeling for you and things like that. And the defender, the, the striker should know just from your body shape and experience and playing with you when you're ready to execute that ball. And Donny van der Beek has always stunned me. I think he hides in football matches by doing this, by pointing and just running. It's it drives me mental. Whereas Cavani, he knew where the space was and he just left it. Great example is did he get a hat trick against Southampton like two years ago or something? Last minute header he scored from. He, was that a brace, wasn't it? Okay, brace. I, I've got a very poor memory to be honest. Um, but I'm is that when we won two one? Probably. But the point is, is that he left that space for for ages before before he was ready to, to to go in. So, so far, Rich, what can you tell me about space? What what have you learned? Or I think a lot of it is um trying to restrict the opposition space, particularly. I think one of the things that when G was talking about Harry Maguire, I think you saw numerous examples last year, last season in particular, where when we lost the ball, we gave away way too much space so you'd have one person trying to cover a third of the pitch at some times and the whole team looked disjointed and then that player gets blamed whereas in effect there's probably other players that should be there as well but I think it's a, one question that um, I think someone might have mentioned to me earlier today is that when you say about cutting the, the pitch in half do some teams try and are they, do they care which side or do they just try and funnel the, the opposition team to either side to then try and absolutely care about what side it is like every team has a stronger side like manchester united have pretty much attacked down the left hand side mm -hmm. since back to Mourinho. right like uh, it is no coincidence that so many of our players perform better on the left wing than they do on the right wing like um even sancho this season um before he went to his like tibetan retreat was scoring a lot of goals on on the right on the right on the left hand side, like again against like Ma Manchester United. Like Delo, although he's done quite well this season, I'm still a little bit disappointed in Delo because of his lack of quality in the final third. But Delo has added a dimension where he can invert that allows more attacking options down the right. But with Varane and Wan Bissaka you're going to have a lot of difficulties coming out on the right-hand side with the same quality you're going to get with um, Martinez and Shaw. Like, uh, and also, Bruno, who um, is the, who's sort of like... I know he's not, he's not really playing as a free eight. He's playing as a number nine most of the time, Bruno. But Bruno isn't filling in that, um, that sort of that hole on the right hand side that allows combinations to go up our right so we will always look uh, except v -Cost, i think is going to change this um we'll get into that afterwards but we're all you're always gonna like try and stop united's left hand side and the and the thing is now is that we've got quality in a sort of like um a free roaming eight position from casemiro who is able to burst through the middle and transition successfully from the center of the pitch which is which is absolutely fantastic but when when you talk about rich like about how the team looked out of shape and we were leaving lots of space that's kind of, that's that's what you do when you're an attacking team you take risks with the space behind you 
Um, and I think De Gea has a, a huge part to play, as well as Maguire, in the lack of control in that space behind us. Like it's like Otamendi has played in high lines all his career and is about as fast as Maguire. It's not just pace that is to do with the high line. It's reading the game. It's anticipation. And mm. normally in a high line, your defender isn't the central defenders are not actually too concerned about the space behind them. They're trying to win the ball in the space in front of them. And I, I think I like that's what a high line is. It's not. It's managing the space in yeah. front and giving up the space in the back. Uh, what do but... you make of Kate Cadet's question about red course? So there were a couple of questions about red course earlier in the, the stream as well, and a lot of people. Are... So I think the question here is basically he's saying what is the point in red course? Because according to him, he's not doing much. I don't know where this is that on. Off... In possession, out of possession. I haven't asked Amonde about red course. I'm a massive fan. I love him. Love yeah, okay, him. Good. He is uh, has a huge impact on the way we play. Fantastic player, what he does. I just think it's going to take a couple of weeks, and once they start to realise, I've, I've seen I've, I'm doing a proper player cam on him because I think he's a brilliant player with what he offers. He you know he can come short, get the ball, and if you play it into his feet, he's going to play it around the corner. He's going to pop it off. We've seen it already Even against Arsenal. We, we were under so much pressure, and uh, a ball got played into him. Beautiful touch. Just into um, Bruno's stride for him to run onto to create a chance. This guy's a brilliant, brilliant player. If you know how to utilize him, um, people think, "Oh, he's a bigger old um, Andy Carroll or something." We saw Andy Carroll the other day. His highlights were chopping people down or or wasting someone or crashing into someone. That's his highlights. Whereas Beckhorse has got the nice weighted pass, can hold up the ball if you play it into his feet correctly and bring others into play. This is why I feel Anthony will. Be loving it right now by mm -hmm. what, he, what he brings to the game. He will bring uh, bring Anthony in situations where he can get more one on one situations with people or get himself in the box. And just going back to Anthony as well, I think what's vital, if you look at Saka, I don't think Saka is a fantastic player. I think Phil Foden technically is better than him, but the difference is with the system of Arsenal, which I want to see Anthony doing. I want to see Anthony running onto balls, not getting balls where he's static and he's squared up with defender straight away. He needs to have more movement, a bit like Pelestri, what we've seen with Pelestri. Pelestri came on for 20 minutes the other day and already cut inside and dictated where he wanted the ball played because he's got that sort of intelligence. So I want to see Anthony getting the ball on the run or getting played in, uh, that sort of thing. And that requires him to use, have better off-the-ball movement than he has... Obviously, got granted, got talent on the ball. But I want to see his off the ball movement, which will make him a better player, and people can feed him running onto the ball, which Saka does as well. Saka doesn't get the ball and then square up people and look to take them on. He gets the ball on the run. All right, okay. Um, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree about Saka there, um, <laughs> where like. It's, Saka is more of a combination winger than a direct winger. You're looking at Martinelli for your um, for your direct attacks, right? But I'll, I'll illustrate. I'll, I'll illustrate the point. Is my screen up, Richard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So here, right, this is an example of what V course brings. Um, this is like the side. This is the side of the pitch, right? The um, where the ball is, and what you would see with Martial is you would see Martial moving in you would see Ericsson moving in, you'd see Malasia or Shaw, yeah. and in particular, and it's so weird, um, you would see Casemiro moving in and Bruno moving in, right? So we still get the traditional five line of attackers, but we have Ericsson now sort of playing as the pivot with Martial taking players away from him. I think are we, are we all, we're all happy with that. We've all seen that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is what Veghorst does that is very, very different. Is Veghorst isn't really mobile to come play a one two and spin in behind. So Veghorst is a fixed point. And that means that Bruno can't really be making too many runs um in behind from these positions. Right? He's not he's not going to get the ball over the top. So Bruno is now operating in a half space. And this means that when the ball gets out to Anthony, Anthony now has three people to combine with. He has a triangle instead of um, uh, just by himself. Because we play Anthony 
as if he's um, a direct winger. And a direct winger is a winger that is fast and will succeed in a lot of 1v1s. Anthony isn't this player. He's not fast enough to do this. So he plays more like Saka, in my view, where he comes inside with the ball and then you'll get runs on the outside and the inside giving him options and then he'll probably just like batter it somewhere <laughs> like his qualities not he's, he's not consistent on the ball but by having veghorst as a central point it's very similar to a sort of a pivot player where everyone can get a reference from around him and you'll find that bruno will be operating in these areas here and that is what is helping Anthony. It's that he has someone, because he can't really go on the outside, he has someone making movements in here, taking players away for him to get in. And he's also got, like, um, Wan-Bissak is not good enough, really, to invert successfully. Um, so he, he will have two options, someone in a wide area, someone in a half space. And what you'll see is you'll see the team coming around like this so he's got far far more options and you also get rashford isolated in 1v1s out here so the signing of veghorst i know he's not particularly sexy but he makes us a much more balanced team by having a physical target man who has the quality to play wall passes so you know you bang the ball to him and he either gets a free kick or like he he plays it to someone he's not gonna like do like you know flick it over his head and travel it into the top corner but what but um and also his work rate is extremely impressive and work rate in relation to space means that you have more space and they have less space that's why it's so important so is there, is there anything you want to add to that amonde or are we going to have a disagreement about yeah, what I, kind of winger saka is no no I, I do agree i think you made a good point there by uh indicating that you'll be working the half space instead and then creating uh, more options for Andy because he does seem a lot really isolated in certain situations, doesn't he, when he's out there. So that's a really good illustration what he just made there about that. Um, but yeah, Veghorst is very, I, I just want to, I can't praise him enough. I think he's a very good player and uh, he's a link-up player. He can do do the job, peel off defenders and you have to go with him. And we saw against the, these big physical first divisional championship defenders the other day, he was peeling off and they were like, Right, I've got to go and go go through him, and you can't really. Whereas you see Ronaldo, for example, people just get off me. You know, you can't do yeah. that. With he knows how to feel his man or get get enough on it and get draw fouls, for example. And it, it's a relief. I mean, like he under sustained pressure, play into his feet. He might be able to draw a foul, and then he can sort of start again and, and start. It's, it's also that. a huge help for De Gea. Like we yeah, we yeah, know yeah. De Gea's crap. Like um on the ball compared to like other goal goalkeepers like you'd say maybe Fabianski and Larice are the only other two that are sort of as woeful as he is on the ball so by having an option to bang it long which we didn't take against Arsenal and it it cost us like under under a high press which all teams have been trying to do us with we now we now they can't go man to man in the press or play an eight press because Veghorst can win the 1v1s in that duel. So in relation to space, Veghorst is giving more space to the team in order to play because you can't overcommit when we're playing out from the back or you go long. And he's also, by fixing players centrally and not really moving and a lack of mobility, as some people would see it, He's giving us more, like he's he's giving us overloads in wide areas, which creates more space in other areas because it's pulling people apart. It's all about space. So when you talk about Victor Osserman, I want to know what he does with space. When you talk about Maguire's shit or like McTominay's useless or Fred is amazing, all of this should be couched in what what they're doing with the space. Obviously. There'll be a, a League One player who's not very good on the ball, all right, and all that kind of stuff. But what that means is, because d d and make no mistake, a League One player is a million times better than anyone you know, like uh, every aspect of football. What that means is, is that they need more space to be effective. So they'll still be effective. If you give anyone time and space, which are linked, you're going to be in problems. Like, look, look at Fred. People think Fred lacks technical quality. Fred scores a lot of goals um, because players 
uh, he gets too much space and he's got he's got the ability to execute with that amount of space whereas someone like um who's a good striker harry kane can do the same but with less space and that's that's why he's better so it's it, and also harry kane what a signing he would be lads when you think about space and the areas he can occupy and the quality so um yeah, I think that's about an hour and 20 minutes, Rich. Time for questions and then brush yeah, I think we've got your Final questions. Thank, I want to say, say thanks, uh, Amondi, for joining us. It's great to have you. I really enjoy this. I really enjoy it. I think it's a great uh, chat. And it's very rare you don't get people uh, coming on doing this on podcasts so much, sort of going into detail. And when, like, even today, I'm, I'm thinking, wow, space it is it's so simple. It is about space. Everything's about space. And, um, as great to have the graphics there at bath time to sort of illustrate that as well but uh, yeah it's got got me really thinking a lot a lot of stuff <laughs> you know, about how to how to create space and and what to do in little formations and 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 there's because there's always going to be difficulties it's like bob marley said every little action there's a reaction so if someone saves himself <laughs> Sorry, that's Newton's third law of physics, I think. All right, well, Bob, Bob Marley said that. Great uh, minds. In Trench Town. Yeah. 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 So, but it's true, because, like, for example, when you see any tactical, uh, tactical battles going on, we exploited Arsenal in the first game because they created overload by bringing a left back into midfield. They do that a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. dominate games. And then suddenly that was their action. And our reaction was to exploit their back three. If you look at their goals that we scored against them, their back four or three at the time was all over the place because there's so much space created by that. So every little action, there's a little reaction. And likewise, when we played them at Highbury, or sorry, Emirates, <laughs> they were able to um, suffocate us with that extra man. And everyone mm. said, Shenka had a wonderful game. He was just there, an extra body in midfield. But one of us had to really sort of, Think about it. That's why it was taxing, and it's a real good game. To yeah, watch. it's the best game I've seen this season, uh, based on tactics and everything else. Because you're thinking, right? How do this guy's come to midfield? We've done it at home, but now it's added pressure. They got the 12th man at home, uh, with the fans, and they're on our back. And the second half, we couldn't really get out, and uh, they were suffocated us. And then we we're in situations where we had to sort of really be on the, on our game. So space is everything. And every action does lead to reaction. And this is why football is such a great game because the man, why managers are paid so highly. And I do think bath time is a manager in the making. <laughs> no, but, well, I'll tell you what I thought about the Arsenal game is I yeah. thought we'd throw it away when we took when we took Anthony off because um, we were good in the first half and we were we were good in the first half against Man City as well. And then we were I thought we were terrible against Man City second half and got away with one I thought we were terrible against Arsenal in the second half but yeah. what was happening was you're right Zinchenko was inverting and because Anthony wasn't mm. really there McTominay had to break the block to stop uh, yeah. to stop Zinchenko turning and we need we we need it and we then didn't have an outlet and stuff and mm. I am like as much as I love Ten Hag I am quite concerned how late he is with his substitutions especially when you think to the Chelsea game where we absolutely battered Chelsea for half an hour because of space. There was too much space and yeah, Potter changed it after 30 minutes or like he changed it before yeah. half time because there was too much space. And when, when you're playing football or watching football or whatever, most of the tactical adjustments that are done in games are about space like we need more space or they've got too much space so you've got to tuck in and things and like when you're playing football uh managers shout a lot of stuff at you but when you've got the experience as amonde was pointing out earlier like it's rare to see as Roy Keane said it's rare to see a defender burst onto the scene because you need to you need to work you need to pay your dues in order to understand the game um players normally sort this out themselves on the pitch and i think that in pep's recent interview that's what he was talking about there was a bit where he was talking about how you coach them and stuff but you can't be their brain like during the game and Mourinho said this about sure it's about filling in and exploiting spaces everything in football is to do with space and when you start looking at football like that you'll see it in an entirely new and refreshing way thanks Vaughan, for Amazing content tonight. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, uh, take cheers, that as questions. If anybody has any questions, like G Wolf, if you have questions as well, anytime, message them to us or comment on the video. 
Okay, that's I've good got to one get. question, mm -hmm. right, which has really been bugging me, um, especially because, like, you know, the Arsenal versus Manchester United. And I want to know what De Gea's head was when he passed it to – it was from a goal kick. He passed it out to um, Duran, mm -hmm. right, where he could have – just hoofed it straight up the pitch, but then he passed it to Varane. Varane had so much, had quite a bit of space, mm -hmm. but instead of clearing it, he actually shimmied it out for a throw in. What yeah. was, what was the thinking of that? Do you know? So yeah, like um, because that went mm, out to, be, and then they be went on to go and score. I can't be bothered to get my tactics board out. It's about space, as it always is, where um, when you play out from the back, you have a man advantage most of the time because, as we talked about earlier, you you can't be overloaded in defence or the midfield. So you get overloaded in attack. And pressing yeah. traps and things like that are really sophisticated ways of dealing with all of that. Um, first of all, Varane has a very poor range of passing, right? And when we're talking about, like you want a team playing out from one side over another. That's a great example of Arsenal forcing it onto our right-hand side because Martinez and Malasir and Shaw are all far better than wan and Varane at getting it out. But you play yeah. it out from the back because you're trying to create space and, that, and, and you're trying to get it into the midfield in between the lines, players turning, going out wide, making the pitch bigger. So or yeah. at least one player making the pitch bigger. And it is, there is no, I mean, I, I probably can get pelters for this. I don't really consider Real Madrid to be a top team anymore. Like I think if they were in the league, I don't know where they finish, but they're not winning. They're not beating Arsenal. They're not beating Man City over 38 games. Um, and the reason why is because those, they have absolute control over every area of the pitch and it starts from building out at the back it's like a it's like a set piece and it's it's also a little bit similar to corners where people get very upset about why don't we just hoof it in for a corner very similar to a goal kit why don't we just hoof it up and someone can head it you want as much control over the over the football pitch as possible so you can exploit spaces so what what happened there g wolf is is similar to any sort of like rebuild in the first year or two, you're going to get some absolute shockers out of the back as you ask players to do something different and they panic and they're all they're all human and things. Like, um, I, I, it's, it's a poor choice from De Gea, like, to be honest, but mm. I also think it's a poor choice for Martinez to take the goal kick and pass to De Gea. Like, but that that's Ten Hag's tactics. And he'll keep doing it because that's his philosophy and that's the way he sees the game. But there is a point behind it. So I hope that answers your question to some degree. Yeah. It, it was just weird the way that it was just the way the goal kick and then, like, you know, as I said, like passing it to Varane. And then Varane's got all that space where he could have gone a little bit further forward. Okay, like you know, he might have got ta he might have got tackled and counterattacked it on. Fine, okay, but as long as he's like making the right choice and not shimmering it out for throwing, it's just poor execution. It's just poor, it's poor execution or something. It'll happen. Happen. It'll happen all the time. Like like footballers are not robots. They're not machines and things. They make poor decisions. They make they make poor passes. But like when when you sort of think about. Varan and De Gea in terms of space. One of the reasons they hold us back in an attacking way is because our space is limited because of their lack of technical quality on the ball, where De Gea can hit sure and he can do a six yard pass, but he can't mm -hmm. he can't accurately hit into a pivot or a winger or whatever. And Varan does not have the quality passing that Martinez has in order to get it in between the lines so what we're trying a style of football with parts that aren't completely suited for it and mm -hmm. and like Maguire for example is far better on the ball than Varane yeah. 
um, and he's far better at sort of making those passes. But mm. at the moment, Varane is like first choice, and I, unfortunately, I think Maguire will probably be chased out of the club um, because of just lots of different things. But players, uh, like it's it's just part it's part of football. It's like Steven Gerrard slip or something. These things, <laughs> hilarious as they are, they happen, and you just sort of you just sort of deal with it. It wasn't. It was nothing more than United trying to control the game. And uh, De Gea to Varane is always going to be an issue, even more so when you have like Wan Bissaka as, 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 like, on the touchline. And what's the touchline on Monday? Do you remember? The best defender. Yeah, best defender in the world. You don't want your, you don't want your worst ball player anywhere near a touchline. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so anything else? No, that was that was all. That I just literally that was it, it. It just baffled me, and I just wanted some clarification on what was the thinking in that. Right, well, so, you give us give us like a summary of like of maybe not what you've learned, but what's been clarified tonight, or things you're going to look for in the next United game. Um, I'm going to look more on the defensive side of the um, like you know. Of the space, what they use and all that lot. So, like as you said, like having them either quarterly or half, and seeing mm -hmm. what the defense like, seeing just what the defense does. Do they go as a unit? Am I going to look for individual, individually, individual player mistakes? And are they going to be as a team or? be more compact and all that lot. That's what I'm going to be looking out for. On the attacking side of it, I'm hoping to see, like, you know, if there we do play a low block team, mm -hmm. hopefully we, um, we see the, uh, the inverted, uh, the inverted right back and left back. Hopefully they'll be inverted in, more narrowly this is the only way i can describe it they'll be mm -hmm. more narrow than out wide of that um inter uh that wide inter thingy i think it is isn't it the interior yeah the interior the, in they got to go in between that haven't they well it, dep it depends on where the ball is but like that's a great starting point is to look for the rest defense structure to see how compact we are, to see who's providing the width and uh, to look at the player rotations to see where we're making space and looking at how we're managing space. I think, I think that's a perfect like thing to be looking for in a football match. That's just what I'm going to be looking yeah. for. Just to add, I think we're playing Forest, aren't we? We're freeing all up. Uh, so we're playing yep. them on Wednesday. So what I'm going to be looking out for is I don't think they've got the quality Maybe how they're going to set up against us. They'd be, su be suicidal for them to really go at us. Uh, they might sit back and look for counters, that kind of thing. So we, like we said earlier, how are we going to break them down if we got them? If we're sitting in their half probing. I'm going to look at uh, little plays. I'm going to see the formation. There's a rest defence, which means you might have stretching. Are we going to stretch their back line? Uh, are they going to play a back five? Are we going to stretch them and look for openings in between the lines? How are we going to get the ball to them? Uh, mm. What sort of players? What are the players going to be doing? What players are going to have more time on the ball? What what players? What how are they going to set up? What players are they going to press? Uh, when they're going to when they're going to press us? Are they going to press us when we're in their half, or are they going to press up high up uh, high up? You know who they're going to try to exploit? How much space is Anthony or the wide men going to get? You know, and there's so many different things that we can look at now, especially after this, the, the discussion today. I already in my head, I'm thinking right, what's the next game? What shall I focus on? to be looking at. Uh, what players am I concerned about? So Anthony is a great one, for example. As Bath Time was saying, it's Veghorst is playing. Let's talk about that. Let's have a look at that. Let's see how Veghorst uh, can bring occupy the players and bring other players into play. And how does that... Uh, are we going to see Anthony in situations where he's not isolated with just wan Saka who's going to be a decoy run? He's not going to pass <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. is he going to be playing into Bruno? Will someone else be coming in to help him out? So... There's so many different factors. That's against Forest. But when we play a better team, when we're on the back foot, then there's other things to look at as well. So it's, it's a wonderful game. That's what I'm saying. There's so many things to feature. And I really appreciate half time for going in in detail again, like you do 
um, love this band, love it. Cheers. Yeah, thank you, Bath Time. Definitely learned Cheers, a lot. Bath time. I think um, we'll probably wrap up then. Amandi, thanks again for coming on. And G Wolf, hope you enjoyed it. I right. did. Thank you very much. Come back. Look after course. I know people are judging him harshly, but it's, I think he's bringing a lot to the team, and I'm going to be quite interested to see how how if, how you know when the team gets used to him, he gets used to how the team's playing. So, I think um, for some reason people get one game, and even though they're, they're doing nothing wrong, they get judged very harshly by fans. I don't know quite what they're. I'm struggling to remember people that have really hit the ground running coming from a, a different league, or but I know George is hard to please. I know he does say he's like mm-hmm. murky team though. As George in chat, shout out to George. Has he put a Langer yeah, George, comments in? It, there's a few wastrels holding us down. Um, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but what, but how are they holding to us make, down in I was, space? I was trying to make the point that we're, on a, we're actually on a pretty good run compared with last season, and there's a lot more positives, I think, than negatives going forward. So we'll see. Maybe George will change his I opinion. I think the main thing is to... Um, a lot of people have set opinions on football and I think what I'd like to see more is people sort of challenging their own opinions, looking at the game. Don't just agree with everybody else. Like, If you think Maguire's at fault and you watch him play another 10 games and you think he's at fault for everything that goes wrong, then that's fine. But there are, I think there's other factors a lot of the time. Um, Kate said he's boring. I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. There's um, an old Chinese so he, curse called May You Live in Interesting Times. A boring I mean, Anthony does potatoes. like spins you could find interesting, but it's not regenerating a lot to the game. I don't yeah. know. We'll see. All right. But thank you, everyone. Cheers, Monday. Thank you, guys. Make sure you press the like and subscribe, guys. And please leave, if okay. you have any questions or comments, uh, message me on Twitter anytime, that's fine. And leave a comment. So cheers, guys.